You know, I never really had a particularly bad experience on Windows that I would consider out of the ordinary. With only one breakage after an update over more than 10 years ago, it stood strong. I never really cared much about Microsoft accounts, all of my applications and games just work, and I am someone who gets excited about new releases, even if it turns out that they have some quirks. I just used my PC without any problems. But as you might have noticed over the past three years, I don't use Windows at all anymore. But why? If everything worked just fine on Windows, and in fact even provided me with better hardware and games compatibility, why did I even switch at all? Well, sometimes you just need to try out something new to see the flaws that you just had to live with. Let's talk about it. This video was made possible by channel members of our community. If you want to participate in selecting new video topics, see what's going on behind the scenes and gain access to various tips and tricks, then please make sure to check out the join button or the link in the video description down below. Before I switched to Linux, I had been a Windows guy all my life. I started off on Windows 98, then 2000, then XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, 10 and finally Windows 11. So yeah, I know my way around that operating system and in all honesty, despite one major breakage after an update that did result in data loss, I never had any issues with it. I installed Windows on my PC, something that I had to do since I like building my own, I logged in with my Microsoft account, since back then I used it on Xbox and also utilized the Play Anywhere feature and just used it after my initial setup. All my hardware had custom drivers for it. All my games just worked, as they are built for Windows in particular, and I never really gave much thought to trying out something different unless I needed to. The first time I actually started using Linux for myself was almost 4 years ago, when I sold my gaming laptop and wanted to start using an old one again. I booted it up, but the Windows 10 installation on there was so old that it actually couldn't update itself anymore. Never saw it before or ever since to be honest. Anyway, at this point I was like, if I'm going to set up an operating system on this old device anyway, why don't I just try out Linux and see how it performs. First I tried Debian 10 with GNOME 3.30. It was ok, but I never really liked this old Android vibe with the vertical scrolling. Then I tried KDE Plasma. And that's when I got surprised. Not only could I use Linux just fine on this computer, in fact I could do everything on it that I used to do on Windows. Ok sure, I was using that laptop for my lectures, so not really the most demanding task. But given the fact that it just worked like that, gave me enough motivation to investigate Linux a bit further. Trying it out on my gaming PC with a dual boot configuration was interesting. By then I learned about the Debian testing repositories and GNOME 40 a major overall of the desktop environment that I previously found to be just old looking and they changed everything. It gave me a fresh experience, a different workflow and just felt so different from Windows while still keeping most of my shortcuts. And once I figured out how to fix some quirks, like OBS for example not having an inbuilt browser source, I realized the potential. The fact that I could even game on it, not just Steam games but also GTA 5 via the Rockstar Games Launcher or Far Cry via Ubisoft Connect, I wondered how far I could take this. What sold Linux to me wasn't application compatibility, since if we are being honest, it's just not the same as on Windows. Not every game is compatible with Linux, especially those with kernel level anti-cheats. Many peripheral configuration programs do not work and alternatives are often limited in support. Some people like to utilize their pre-configured surround audio presets, often kind of wrongly marketed as DTS or Dolby Atmos, despite all of them not featuring actual surround sound at all. Many applications just don't work. The Adobe Suite, Microsoft Office, the Xbox Game Pass app, like mentioned, official peripheral configuration tools and the more niche you get, the more complicated it becomes. But the truth is that none of that matter to me. I stayed on Linux because of the incredible options that it provides me with. The GNOME desktop environment, despite initially turning me off, has become my favorite desktop experience of all time. Its incredible overview, the ability to use the Windows key and scroll wheel to switch between desktops, the smoothness, pacing and looks of it all really sold me on Linux. The fact that not every program is Linux compatible doesn't really affect me at all. I have already said it in previous videos. Essentially all tools I use to create my videos with are Linux compatible. For programming I have always used Visual Studio Code or IDEs from IntelliJ, which work even better because I don't have to install and set up kit and dependencies for Windows. Most of my other use cases mostly just require a browser or an occasional editing tool, whereas open source solutions like LibreOffice are more than enough. 
And when it comes to gaming, okay sure, that is a more difficult topic since I don't really play any games that don't work right now. It is technically a problem for me, especially Destiny 2 or new games like Battlefield 6. But right now, luckily for me, I don't really feel the need to play them. And since I just like my Linux desktop so much, I don't see a point of setting up a dual boot installation and wasting space on my laptop. In fact, if I want to dual boot like I did for the Battlefield 6 beta, I did so with this, an external SSD. And this is probably the best way how you can do it. Otherwise, I just don't need Windows. And here's another thing I learned. Linux is just so much faster. Like I of course can't speak for everyone here, but from my own experiences, it boots faster, shuts down quicker, updates much faster, and whenever I set up a new installation on a new system, or if I want to showcase a new distro, it only takes me around 20 minutes max. And this is setting it up, removing software that I don't need, and installing my basic programs. When I set up Windows 11 on my Microsoft Surface again, since I thought to myself that I don't need another Linux laptop that is not even 100% compatible, it took me over one and a half hours to get this same basic setup. This was mostly caused by the setup wizard, removing Microsoft Office, which just refused to be removed via the Office removal tool, as well as all the other bloat, and finally adjusting all the settings to what I prefer. I'm usually someone who is really fast to set up a new system, but these constant waiting times, Windows updates and the overall experience in the end was just not worth it for me, despite the better compatibility with my Surface, so I just installed Fedora again. I'm not using Linux because of some stance against Microsoft, though to be fair, some of their practices really aren't okay. I use it because it just provides me with a much more engaging workflow that for me doesn't really mean much compromise. All of the other benefits like having local accounts by default, not serving any third party ads or gathering telemetry about what I like are all bonuses and actually contributed to being that fast. Sure, not everything is perfect, like me having to reboot twice after an Nvidia update for the new module to load. But like I said, given its speed, I don't really mind it at all, since waiting through Windows updates would take much longer anyway. Now, with Nvidia on this laptop, or with hybrid graphics in general, the experience is slightly worse than on Windows when it comes to perceived smoothness, or the occasional full screen flicker when a video with hardware acceleration is playing. However, despite all of that, I still like this experience much more, even on KDE Plasma, despite having some limitations to my preferred workflow. It still felt like going back to Windows would actually be taking a step back. It's really interesting to me how an operating system that is not perfect is able to outshine something that honestly just works most of the times. And who knows, maybe it can be the same for you. I really recommend that you try out Linux at least once. With a beginner-friendly distro like Sorin OS, you get a pretty good idea on what I like so much about it. But anyway, that's it for this video. What do you think on my view on Linux? Do you feel the same or are you rather sticking to an operating system that already works for you? Please let us know down in the comments. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. I really hope you had a blast watching. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.